also about the holy scripts or holy writings or spiritual writings. Um, I had a uh, one uh, channeling. Uh, uh, it was a long time ago. About uh, we we know the holy Bible in a sense. Uh, maybe we know some Vedic knowledge that has been passed over. And then I decided to ask the Enrico about uh, uh, <laughs> holy spirits. No, holy scripts. Holy scripts. And uh, the information was that uh, basically uh, holy scripts or holy writings, let's consider it them holy writings, is uh, basically uh, when uh, somebody, for example, highly evolved uh, spiritual being uh, or uh, somebody who channels uh, brings this information through and writes them down with this uh, high high energy uh, or ascended energy you would say uh, basically what you will read is uh, not the words by words like the terminology but basically you will read the energy that has been put there and uh, what the Enrico said that uh, uh, holy uh, writings are not terminology, are not concepts put on paper. In order to be holy, you have to stop eat meat. Or in order to be holy, you have to pray three times a day or chant any mantras. Uh, this is like a concept that's written down. But holy writings are not concepts. Holy writings are not understood by words. Holy writings is basically what I stood there can also be stories um, that are just, uh, you know, a bear went and then he saw something and then something happened. And through such stories, uh, you start to perceive the energy from the being uh, that has been writing these uh, uh, writings. And you become in tune with the thinking, or you become in tune, or the story, or the words uh, help you to become in tune, or in align uh, with that being's energy. And then you start aligning yourself to that being's energy, and you start perceiving that higher energy. It's basically, it's like, a, like a, I don't know how to say, a, you're not reading concepts, you're reading something. It, it can be stories, it can be it can be in any words. Uh, describe it, it can be in any words uh, written down. But when you read this, the story aligns your energy vibration, the story aligns your thinking in a particular way that you start perceiving the being's energy. And uh, basically they said that uh, these are the holy texts. Sometimes the holy uh, writings, what they said, is not even understood in any language. It's just somebody takes, starts uh, reading the pronunciation, starts reading the information what's there, and all of a sudden he just starts happening and starts being in an uh, enlightened state. It's just that um, the rites help you to align energy with that higher being's energy. You become on the same energy length, and that higher energy starts blasting through you. And uh, the, it's like a, a way of you transcending and perceiving energy. And how do I understand how do this works? Is basically when you are in a uplifted energy, you may say, in a higher energy uh, or in a lightened energy, uh, you think differently, you write differently. And many times when you have channeled the higher beings, like from the higher light, uh, they come with stories, they come with deep, uh, sensible stories. Uh, and this is one of the popular stories what I want to share. I just remembered it. Uh, I didn't plan it to tell the story. But uh, we channeled one time a being from higher realm, uh, with the place of love. And uh, there were, I don't, I don't remember the questions, but the story was like, well, uh, to understand the higher density beings and to understand humans, uh, why do they help humans? It's basically, uh, you can imagine uh, a girl with a puppy, a small puppy, and uh, 
they both help each other and the puppy gives joy to the girl young girl and the girl loves caring about the puppy she loves uh, you know doing everything to help him feed him pet him whatever it may be but they both are like uh, let's say uh, in a perfect love or a perfect uh, joyful experience as it may be and at one time the puppy uh, uh, lost uh, from home uh, he went somewhere and he didn't find a way back and the puppy was lost uh, in dark forests in rains in alleys uh, and he was so frightened he was wet he was sick also and uh, it lasted for many many days maybe months maybe years for, for a while long while and the puppy has even um, lost hope of uh, getting back to his house the puppy lost uh, hope of even meeting her uh, her girl uh, uh, owner that she he the puppy really loved like a doggy puppy small doggy and uh, at that point one day the puppy somehow find his way back because also the owner was searching for him and then there was this visualization of this image that the puppy saw again his house where he lived and outside in the yard is that girl uh, which he loves really much and they both are in this uh, uh, loving energy let's say enjoy and then what happens is uh, the the puppy is like he's highly excited but then again he's highly afraid he wants to go there he wants to run meet her but he's highly afraid he's like stopping he wants to do this and then again goes back and to this and, and uh, you know sorts of emotions sorts of uh, whatever whatever you may call it and the girl just picks the puppy up and uh, tons of uh, loving feelings, tons of excitement, so I don't know how to describe it. But when the first time I received this story, uh, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't even speak for 10 minutes. At the second time, maybe for 8 minutes I couldn't speak. And now, I just when the energy starts coming, I'm like, stop, 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 I don't want to cry, I don't want to cry. And this is the way of understanding us humans as incarnations. And again, here are no concepts again, here, here's nothing, here's just a story. And these stories uh, can align, can activate your inner energies and can align you to receive higher energies. And this is what Enrico said about uh, holy writings, holy writings. And uh, he showed me another uh, image of, uh, uh, th uh, this is a second story which I wanted to share today is when at the beginning we had channeling uh, I asked many questions about uh, when did this uh, disconnection from the source happen and then they started telling me that many 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 years ago uh, there was a civilization uh, what I understood in India or part of India uh, where there was a hugely high uh, spiritual evolution and uh, people did not speak there people did not use words uh, they spoke with energy, uh, they spoke with sounds and it was easy to understand each other through sound because they put a resonance and they somehow activated talking with each other body is, is through telepathy uh, it's something like you imagine your friend and sometimes you feel what he's doing and sometimes the friend calls you and you somehow uh, uh, telepathically send messages or impulses uh, and they somehow decide to perceive this energy and to take action or call you or to maybe later I'm, I'm busy right now I will call you later and uh, this is something by nature that we do everybody does but they uh, were doing this constantly on a regular basis they didn't uh, uh, they didn't talk to each other they were uh, talking uh, with feelings because feelings can send you a lot of more information than words and uh, then the disconnection happened when the, uh, they decided to write down the sounds they were like basically mantras uh, what it means is 
that the same like this story with mantra with sound and vibration and feeling the sound feeling can align you again to a higher energy and thus when you are in the flow of the sounds uh, you can receive the higher energy it's not like you use your mind okay this mantra is recommended to be chanted 108 times during week uh, difficulties and so on but it was like a sound like a song uh, without any meaning but the sound that resonates your body your inner energy uh, to activate your to activate the line to align you to the higher energy uh, so basically what I want to share is that uh, uh, at that time they did, decided to write down these in um, what we call Sanskrit or something, write down these. And uh, people on the farther regions of India or maybe in other countries, uh, but I understood that the cities were not so inhabited then, or barely uh, some cities at all. Uh, they didn't understand what is this what's right in here they try to speak oh yeah they feel something but um, the messenger that gave this like holy scripts or the mantras he was like that this means this and this means that and through time people started to use uh, conceptualization uh, too many meanings they don't they don't look at the situation as such right now something is happening I understand what's happening but they try to why is this happening Okay, if I do this, this happens. If I do that, that happens. And they put concepts and labels on any things. And this is when people tend to lose, lose connection with their soul and start getting more and more connection with the mind. Like conceptualizing, comes on, comes on. And this is where the greatest disconnection happens. And uh, uh, this is what I understood as a, as a source of uh, losing the spiritual contact connection so again this is also the uh, meaning of that to get back to spiritual connection you have to uh, look at life as it is you have to be in the no thought state you have to be in the open state you have to be in the story state what I told earlier and also the uh, many holy writings that we have right now is like if you have a scratch right here, it means this, it means that. Uh, you have to pray God 10 times a day, 30 times a month or something to get this and that. And uh, you have to do this, you have to do that, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. You have blah, blah, blah. And it's all through conceptualization, it's all just a noise in the mind. So basically this is like a law, a book of law. It's like the same as governments are doing. But in order to get back to your spiritual connection, it's just a matter of sense of feeling and allowing uh, it's talking with your heart it's talking with your soul it's talking with your energy and it's something that great artists have always done something great artists musicians have always done as they bring this soul uh, into a emotional into a sensational into a energizing uh, feeling uh, experience of feeling experience so and this happens through energy sound energy and emotion uh, all together and uh, yeah about losing weight I think I will do it in the other video thank you for watching so I don't make too too much videos